I have to say, the boat's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. Everything that we do is a lot bigger than it seems. Timmy Cuvion's a marine engineer who does most of his work for the oil industry. But for the past year and a half, he's been helping the government clean up the longest running oil spill in American history. And there's a good chance you've never heard of it. Why do you think the public wasn't made aware of this spill until long after it happened? You know, that's a great question. And, and, and it's something that, that I, uh, I struggle with. I was aware when it first happened. And then I just assumed that, that it had been taken care of. The spill started back in 2004, when Hurricane Ivan tore through the Gulf of Mexico and knocked down an offshore oil platform owned by a Louisiana-based company called Taylor Energy. Taylor tried to stop the leak, but only managed to plug about a third of the compromised underwater wells. After spending $200 million to clean up the site, they claimed nothing more could be done. They said the necessary technology simply didn't exist, but that only about two gallons of oil were still seeping into the ocean each day. When did you first find out about the Taylor Energy oil spill? I first heard about it right after the ongoing BP drilling disaster. Dustin Renault works for the environmental group Healthy Gulf which monitors oil spills along the coast. They were surveying the infamous BP spill when they inadvertently discovered that the Taylor leak, a full six years after it started, was much, much worse than Taylor and the government initially reported. Someone saw it on radar and called us to go fly over it to check and see if it was actually you know, something. And sure enough, there was a miles long slick of oil. We asked the Coast Guard, hey, what is this over here? This doesn't look like BP. And they're like, oh, that's just Taylor. It's just two to three gallons a day that they're spilling, which at that point raised red, red flags immediately for our guys. Why did it raise red flags? Because two to three gallons of oil doesn't leave a 10 mile sheen on the surface of the water. So it was kind of ridiculous how the discrepancy of what we saw and what Taylor was reporting. It was about nine miles off the mile of the river out of a shipping lane, and it just went unnoticed due to lack of traffic in the area. And at that time, there just wasn't conclusive evidence to see exactly what was going on down on the ocean floor. Captain Christy Luttrell is the Coast Guard commander in charge of this part of Louisiana. For years, the Coast Guard and Taylor Energy went back and forth on how bad the spill was and whether it could even be cleaned up. Taylor has cited studies that found there was no active oil spill and that any evidence of oil was from contaminated sediment. They also point to one that suggests any attempt to clean up the site would lead to more environmental damage. What led the Coast Guard to decide that it needed to go outside of the company responsible for the leak to fix the leak? Well, we had given the responsible party the chance to contain the spill. There was a little bit of a disagreement between the government and the responsible party of exactly what was going on down there. And when they didn't act, I went ahead and partially federalized the case and hired the contractor that we chose, and they got the job done. That contractor was Kuvion. He created a device that would end up collecting 1,000 gallons of leaking oil a day, around 250 times more oil than Taylor's original estimate. And when Taylor wouldn't do it, that's when they hired us, and then we installed a containment system to catch it. The core idea of that system is pretty basic. A really big upside down bucket that catches most of the oil before it disperses. But to make that work, you need a whole lot of gear. The oil is currently 450 foot under the, under the That's water. That's been collecting it's, oil. It's collecting oil all month. Every what, 28 days you're picking up two and a half of these? Yes, uh, we, we fill these tanks here. We've collected 300,000 gallons of oil so far. Roger, roger, two tents going in the water. After a month of trapping the oil, a remote-controlled drone brings a hose down to pump the oil from tanks underwater to tanks on board the ship. What happens to the oil once you bring it back to shore? We collect the oil and then we deliver it to a recycling facility. It's then sold and turned into uh, energy. It's a great uh, Louisiana sweet crude. It's not a permanent solution at all. It's a cap on something that's spilling. Every day right now, 
A thousand gallons of oil is not pumped into the Gulf and it's pumped into a containment device and it's kept out of our environment. I think that's a pretty large victory to celebrate, but it's a temporary solution and we need a permanent fix. But nobody, including federal agencies, has come up with a permanent fix. And Taylor still doesn't seem convinced that one is possible or even necessary. So they've taken the position that nothing more can be done and that they've essentially stopped the leak and that it's not that bad. It's pretty damning evidence that the leak is uh, its substantial. How is that argument even being taken seriously? It's a joke. But Taylor Energy isn't laughing. They're suing everyone. Taylor Energy has not only sued the federal government to get all of their money back out of a trust fund that the government forced them to set aside, They've sued me because the Coast Guard had me go out and install a containment system to clean up their mess. In the suit against Kuvion, Taylor demands Timmy be prohibited from accessing the site, saying that Kuvion is not professionally qualified to undertake the work. In the suit against the Coast Guard, which specifically names Captain Luttrell, Taylor wants the government to reverse their decision, saying they shouldn't be held liable for the Coast Guard suddenly changing their plan based on a more recent study. We requested an on-camera interview with a Taylor representative on multiple occasions. Each time, we were denied. At the moment, oil companies self-report leaks, right? They tell people that there's a leak, they tell people how large it is. It's hard to look at this and know precisely whether this is like a company behaving badly or a company that just doesn't know what the heck to do. I think it's a bit of both. I think the company has definitely made some missteps along the way. But I also think if we allow oil companies to be in charge of their own cleanup, we don't know if their reporting is accurate. The government isn't fact-checking it. This oil spill might be the longest in American history, but it's definitely not the only one. According to Healthy Gulf, there were over 2,000 spills or leaks in 2016 alone. Meanwhile, the Trump administration's current approach to offshore drilling is to loosen regulations. So that number is only expected to grow. When you're drilling and exploring for oil, there's inevitably going to be spills that come with it. But how we respond to that and how we clean that up is you know, the true testament of what our workers and our government is capable of. And Taylor is really an example of how things just go horribly wrong for 15 years. 